keep that one. Keep that on the down low. And now everyone that we're in it is like, wait, keep what on the down low? Why won't you tell us? Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start a four pay version of this uh, podcast. And you could get that extra little secret information about what we were talking about that we're going to keep on the down low. Don't tell anyone. Secrets. Isn't there a song? <laughs> Is there like an 80s song like that? It's like, um, you know what I'm talking about? Like, uh, like secret it's something I mean, like i can hear i can hear what it is that yeah. you're trying to sing, but also have no idea what it is you're trying to sing at the same time like it's a it's kind of my my ammo I, totally get I can get a better shot there then but then i have my head over my head <laughs> <laughs> two heads are better than one and that's the sauna do we need to record from the sauna one day <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so that would actually that would actually be really funny this is that it's a little bit better that the light like it's like super bright today yeah i mean this is a little, yeah we'll leave this one yeah. you can see the uh this so um maybe and it's kind of it'll be a good like uh setup for uh what, you want, what we want to talk about today so this here this whole situation happening here is a recognition that I could want the boys to keep their stuff organized in a way that would be so much better. Like, I know it would be better. They know it would be better, mm -hmm. but they won't do it. You, you right. know what I mean? So instead, this is like the catch all corner for mm -hmm. everything shoes, bags. I can show you what's like in this bucket or this. There it is. There you go. You got it. Those are my shoes, by the way. So it's my catch-all corner too. But yeah. like this bucket over here. Anyway, um, it's it's a Pebble Pelican case. It has got so much crap in there. But so like every four to six months, we just kind of purge it. And uh, forty six months. Every four. We're gonna grow those shoes by forty six months. Yeah. Now um, they're not growing that much anymore. Um, uh, and it makes the rest of the gym so much easier to yeah. keep organized because yeah. anything that does not belong where it's supposed to be just gets chucked into this corner. Makes sense. Yeah. And so it's like, it's the equivalent of a junk drawer in your kitchen, yeah. you know? And so that makes perfect sense. So it works. I'm still here. I'm just shutting the door. Was that a was that a little climbing wall? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you have you seen this yet? No. So this is Andrew's. Yeah. I'm plugged in, so it's gonna be tough to. Yeah. No, but I see it though. Yeah. This is Andrew's kind of corner of fun. So um, it's caddy corner. It goes onto the back wall, and it's on that yeah. wall facing. And he can do little bouldering projects mm -hmm. and work on it. So he. Um, He's got Nicole and I going to the climbing gym pretty consistently. I went with him yesterday. Cool. We do top rope um, stuff, so it's a little bit longer than a bouldering project, which is pretty cool. And what's what's top rope stuff? What does that mean? You like belayed, so the one person's on the wall, like climbing oh, 50, gotcha. yeah. 50 feet up, versus just like a you know bouldering wall, bouldering wall, yeah. twelve to fifteen feet up, cool. um, and then the other person's on the ground belaying them. So if they fall, right. they don't like. Ah! Then they both be laying on the ground. Am I right? Or am I right? I'm all right. I'm all right. <laughs> uh, over the shoulder, boulder holder. <laughs> you know where that's from? Little Monsters? No. Oh, where'd you get it from? Uh, it's from Beaches, the the movie Beaches with Bette Midler and oh, he was uh, Barbara Hershey. Um, and Bette Midler plays a, uh, she's like a, She's an entertainer. Like that's she grows up to be an entertainer, becomes like super famous, and Barbara Hershey marries and becomes rich because of who she marries, but then they get divorced. The she has like but they stay friends their whole life. And then Barbara Hershey ends up dying of cancer. <gasps> Spoiler alert if you haven't seen the movie. It came out in like 1987. So if you haven't seen it, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Um but uh but yeah, so uh she Bette Midler hits it big playing. Uh, a part on Broadway where it's basically like a 
it's a play about the creation of the brazier and so Otto bra or something or whatever in the song and it's all about him and uh, he creates the over the shoulder boulder holder <laughs> <laughs> That's a, yeah, I don't ask me don't ask me why that is taking up sense. space in my brain like, oh. i can purge that out and like offload it to just like a little hard drive that like goes right here like an implant chip somewhere and it's like like huh let me get access to that. Yeah, okay. That, now I'm gonna send that back in. Imagine like all the other stuff that you could keep in there. <laughs> Over the shoulder boulder holder. Yeah, I remember. Uh, yeah, first time I heard that was Little Monsters with Howie Mandel and then uh, and Fred Savage. They say something about that. Too. Yeah. And then uh, I always remember that. And then the one where he like blew his nose in his hand. And then like I think he was like he went something like that. And he goes, "Ooh, thought it was tasty, but it's not." And I was like. Uh, I was like, oh, that was the first time I understood. Like, I, I don't know how many times I watched that movie, and then one day I was like, oh, that's what he's saying. And, and that, I think that began your career of bad jokes. <laughs> yes. Um, the, so the, uh, right. the coffee shop in the library at the at the academy. Um, the guy working behind the counter is he's tried a handful of like fun, you know, retail initiatives, moving cash registers. Stuff. He gets shot down on like everything. Of course. <laughs> feel bad for him but he had us his little whiteboard station where he's been writing up uh dad jokes i feel like i don't know if i told you this one um, mm. uh, i got it's, it's actually it's a really good joke about pizza nah i shouldn't tell you it's really cheesy uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh it's almost as bad as my joke about paper what's that uh, it's pretty terrible actually i don't know <laughs> 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 oh man you do these all day all day all day so all day uh, yeah anyway yeah my yeah my uh my nieces they have um they've been learning like dad jokes and stuff just to like keep up with me mm -hmm. but they don't let me answer it so i always take dad jokes now it's more like trivia for me like i just feel like i know so many now someone's like you know uh you know i don't know someone will ask I can't think of one off the top of my head, but they'll ask me one. And I'm like, I've probably already heard it before. So I'm like, I guess the answer. I'm like, how did you know? I was like, remember that thing you were talking about where it's like, I wish there was a place that I like, it just, yeah. it's taking up so much space in my head. Uh, that's them. But they ask it, you know, and they'll be like, and they'll be like, you know, what's a, what's a witch's favorite subject in school? And I'll be like, and they'll go spelling. And like, they'll answer it before I even get my word out. I was like, it doesn't. You gotta let me guess, guys. Yeah, you gotta yeah, let me yeah. guess. Well, they know your MO, so yeah. in a sense, no, they kind of don't. They should yeah. they, they kind of have to get it in. Yeah. They get it, you gotta slip it in before you get a chance. That's what she said. There you go. <laughs> All right. Boom, we're off, folks. Have a great week. Hey, here we go. Good See you at the open. In real. <laughs> uh, good stuff, man. Yeah, what, I love me some good stuff. What did you say? We'll see you. We'll see you for the what? The open. The 2023 No Bull CrossFit Games Open. Brought to you by Aristotle. 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 Aristafari. <laughs> and and also more no bull stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Do you love how when you signed up early before? Uh, January, they gave you a twenty, what twenty, twenty five dollar something. If you spend, yeah. yeah, right. And so they're still offering that deal. So it had nothing to do with signing up early. Every time they put up that stuff, I'm like, no bull. You think we're stupid? Like they do it all the time. Like I, I can't stand those. Like you get the email, like get twenty dollars if you do this, and then it's like, oh, if you spend fifty dollars, right? But I mean, just logging onto their site costs like you know eighty five dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's the um, it's, it's like Sam's. It's the my buddy Gobar used to call it the two hundred dollars store. Yep. You can't go. You cannot go to Sam's Club and not spend two hundred dollars. No. no you Somebody's cannot. gonna go do it. Hey, I went to Sam's Club and I had spent two hundred dollars. You're a loser. Don't talk to me again. <laughs> Damn it! I just violated the rule from last week. Don't Speaking of which, <laughs> I have to share this with you. It makes me think of Sam's because Sam's Club is like Sam's Club is a place where you could go get um. Where you can go get uh, 
TVs. People like to go get TVs. And brisket. And brisket. And you just spent $385. So I saw this commercial the other day, and it was for Samsung or something. And it was probably the most, um, like, it was the most, uh, like, inclusive commercial I have ever seen on TV in my life from, like, uh, they checked all the boxes, right? And I was actually, like, I was, like, this, <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh. I was, like, it's so good. They got it all. It was So it was a, uh, a Hispanic guy. Was He's, like, honey, I'm heading to the store, and I'm going to pick up, you know, the basics for the Super Bowl. And here's wife, like, out from the background. She's, like, what are the basics? And he's, like, oh, chips and salsa and uh, some, um, you know, barbecue and a uh, Samsung plasma flat screen TV, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And so you see his wife, you see his wife peek her head around, you know, African-American lady, and she peeks around, she goes, get the 85 inch. She goes, all right. And he walks out and then he's in the store shopping around and it is, um, and it is, and the woman who's helping him in the store is a, um, I don't know, let's say, I don't know if Indian Another descent. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a, in a wheelchair. In a wheelchair, helping him. <laughs> I was like, check, check, check. They got it, but it was so. But it was actually, it was a great commercial because I was like, it was, just, it was. But I remember I like watching. That, it, I was like, oh, right, oh, I like it's. Oh. Um, it's it's a testament to the equalizing nature of overwhelming consumerism yeah. taking control of everybody's life. Yeah. So we are all we we are all victims. We are no all who you are. No matter who race, you are. Color, creed. <laughs> Uh, you know, we're all getting that big TV for mental, the Super Bowl. physical. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You're all fucked. <laughs> you're, <right. laughs> you're all gonna. You're all gonna come under eventually. The at the spell, end of the, yeah, the spell of capitalism. At the end of the day, we everyone looks at that commercial and be like, "That's not a bad deal for an eighty-five." Yeah, yeah. I think maybe I'll go get a new TV. I, gonna, I do one. not need one, and I'm destroying the planet. But fuck yeah. it, I'm gonna go get a new TV. <laughs> <laughs> it was good though. Pick up the brisket while you're there. He <laughs> got the brisket. Oh man, I was like, good, bravo. That was a good one. That was well yeah, done. Well done. That's good. So, um, anyway, yeah. But now I just really want that TV. Really so, anyway. brisket. so, yeah. yeah. All right. Are you excited for the open? You ready, to boogie? You feeling yeah. good about it? Oh, there he goes again. <laughs> Wait, come back. Come back. Come back. <laughs> oh, I don't feel so good now. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to fart near a sauna. <laughs> Isn't that like a rule? It's electric. It's not gas. <laughs> I wonder what's worse, farting in an elevator or farting in a sauna? Like, Just I feel a like big explosion from the sauna. <laughs> Did anybody hear that? What just happened? I, felt, I just felt something. Yeah. Nice. I come in, my hair is just like out, and it's just like everything's <laughs> everything's smoking. Uh, smoke fart in the sauna. <laughs> That'll be the name of this episode: the one where Jack doesn't <laughs> fart in the sauna. Uh, I am. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very excited for the open. To answer your question, um, I love the new structure. I think three weeks is perfect. Uh, I am. Uh, I'm relatively confident I will make the online quarterfinal. So it is relatively low stakes in the sense of like, I'm not worried about I, it, it, You're always worried. <laughs> there's always, right, it's there's on your there's mind. always that, that hence my, you know, jokingly like, oh, I've got gas. Um, yeah. But it's, I am, I am at a stage where I enjoy the nervousness of did the last year of training yield um some sort of uh, sustained fitness and improvement in fitness um i feel healthier uh, my joints feel better right like i've i've migrated between two different training programs over the course of the last nine months uh to a year in the last like two months i've switched over to mayhem um very happy with it we could talk we could have a whole we should have an old episode on on programming and what's no, out there, you. what's in the market. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and, and we've got a good plan, you know, myself and uh, the nerds of fitness will be coming in and joining you yeah. in late mornings on their um, mid morning on Fridays. Yeah. So that we can, we can knock it out. And yeah, yeah. man, I think it's going to be a fun three weeks. And the opens are always not to, 
jump to the end. The open is always a great excuse to um, reevaluate what your metric for success is in this pursuit of a active lifestyle in which CrossFit is a cornerstone of your movement practice. Um, right? So, because if you're just doing it to stay healthy, that ain't gonna last, no. right? That mo that motivation train is gonna fucking leave the station six months in. Yeah. Um, if it's just to, I want to lose fifteen pounds. Well, that ain't gonna a probably not gonna lose fifteen pounds. You're probably gonna gain five, but right. if you do it well, your you know body composition, you got, yeah, physiology is gonna change and things are gonna. Yeah, you're gonna so so all those somewhat quantitative, but I would argue um, nebulously more qualitative metrics will um, will ebb and flow, and there may be room to make a deeper, uh, more examined investigation of what it is that you're doing. And the open is a great excuse every year to do that yeah. like it, it throws it in your face unapologetically like yeah. it really does I, right which i think is what probably what causes people to get so those who get angry about the open what makes them get so angry about it mm -hmm. because for the rest of the year they can just ignore the fact that they're not doing what they're saying they want to be doing right and then it's like oh. hey well the opens here and so we're going to remove the um, illusion of self-assessment and we're going to assess you objectively. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. And, yeah. that's, and that's, a very, really like that's a very uncomfortable thing for, I would say, most people to accept. You can't, you can't, you can't judge me. Um, actually, I can and I'm going to. And uh, you paid 20 bucks for me to judge you. So. Yeah. <laughs> 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 By the way, no rep. Yeah, right. Like, I, oh my god. I mean, at heart, like one of the elements of CrossFit is that. And you don't. I heard it um, on uh, Armchair Expert. Uh, it was uh, the, um, the the one with the David Ferrari, the the New Zealander. He does like the little documentaries. They did it on sandwiches, but specifically on cheesesteaks. And they went mm. to Philly. Um, and it was it was well done. It was fun. I mean, very biased. Steaks. Yeah, cheese steaks and Samsung yeah. TVs. Yeah. Right, add that to the shopping list. But you, they, think um, be, you think those will be in the open? Cheese steaks, cheese steak <laughs> eating contest. Yes. Just how much cheese whiz can you fit in your mouth? That's right, I'm a um, But uh, they interviewed a guy, and uh, they were like, "What makes Philadelphians Philadelphians? Like, what is it?" And he, it, it was funny. He goes, "We're kind." But we're not nice, and right. I was like, I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And and then afterwards, Monica and Dave Ferrer were kind of examining that, and it's like, nice is surface, kind is deeper. Kindness is yeah. something that is like in your soul. Niceness is like, oh yeah, you look great. Those pants are definitely purple, and yeah, so that's some purple pants you got on, right? But kindness would be like. Dude, don't ever come out of your house wearing those pants again. Like yeah. you look like Krusty the Clown. And so, and and you told me when we first met to make sure you never look like Krusty the Clown. So I am trying to live up to the agreement that we made in this friendship. And I'm telling you, don't ever wear those pants again. These are my favorite pants. My dying grandmother gave me these pants. My, 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 my. Right? Like all these excuses of I want to be able to wear these pants. And then finally I could be like, okay, well, then wear the fucking pants. I'm just doing what you asked me to do. And so somebody says, like, I want to get fitter. I want to be faster. I want to be stronger. And they pick up a barbell and they move like shit. And you say, you just paid me $200 to come here every, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday this month. If you touch that barbell again, I'm gonna kick you out. You do. You have no business touching that barbell. I don't have to be nice to tell you you move like shit. Here's a PVC pipe. You're gonna use this until you don't move like shit anymore. And maybe you move a little bit better now. You have a barbell. Now we can put some water yeah. on that barbell. 
but I really want to do this. I'd be like, well, that's great, but you're not going to do it here. <laughs> right? Like, uh, that was, and I think that's the, that's the, you have to find that, especially with an athlete, you have to find that balance between kind and nice if you want them to stay. Cause I feel like that's a, that's a conversation. Like there's plenty of people you could say that to. And there's plenty of people, if you put it that way, they're not hearing what you're saying. They just think you're being mean. And I, I mean, don't that's all right. And I, and it, yeah. and it, I, I guess, um, yes, I totally agree with you there. At, at some point there is a balance and then yeah. you know, both parties have to make a choice. I don't have to make that choice anymore. Nope. And, and I, I realized for me personally, I didn't want to make that choice anymore. Yeah. Um, that it's because it's, I guess maybe it's also like I don't have the um, I no longer have the emotional personal endurance to make that choice anymore. Yeah. That like uh, it's look, it's it feels like a limited resource. Like you have yeah so yeah, and, uh, especially I'm gonna save I'm gonna save those emotional energy points for other things. Yeah. Um, that. Or maybe by not having to spend all that energy in that capacity, it opens up room to hear other things that yeah. maybe I was missing in other capacities or in other places. That makes sense. Like, so, so it, it's a tough. I mean, but again, like this is these are all choices you make when you live or attempt to live a very examined life an introspect not even introspective but just examined like why 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 are you feeling this way why are you making these choices and so the open removes so many of those choice variables for three weeks one day out of a week for three weeks so you're talking three days out of the year there's no more choices right the only choice you have to make is, am I going to wear my purple pants or am I going to wear <laughs> my leopard pants? But no, if I'm going to do foundations, scale, or RX. Yeah. Right? Like if I signed up, look, I gave three categories, foundation, scale, RX. Just pick one. doesn't matter. Well, I'm going to do it RX. You're going to get one rep done. <laughs> That's yeah. your choice. Mm -hmm. You're going to get four reps. You're going to take it. You know, you're going to time cap. It's going to take you... 68 minutes to finish this workout if they do one like they did back in 15 15 right was, that was the first year 14 and 16. Yeah, with the, uh, cool. when he threw he threw the watch he's like <laughs> not or it's four time the clock will not save you yep <laughs> um but yeah i think there's worth in that i think there is um a benefit and it can be managed handled accepted processed whatever whatever word whatever cognitive word you want to use by each individual in the way that best serves them yeah. i would offer that if you are um refusing to participate but yet choosing to participate in every other aspect or capacity of the methodology except for this one thing there may be something in that that you are choosing to ignore yeah, and things we ignore are the things that will most likely come back to catch us off guard. So, what would you say to someone that's, um, you know, they 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 come year round? They're, let's say they've made the committed club every month, so they're getting their classes in, right? They're coming, you know, three four times a week, and uh, they're feeling good, and they log their scores in Sugar Wad, and they're but the open comes around, they're like, yeah, no, I really, um, you know, I don't really care. Like, I don't really care you know, where I stand in the world, or I really, you know, I'm not really, I don't want to compete. I don't like to compete. And this just feels a lot of pressure. Like, what would you, what would you say to that person? Even coming from, come from the place where you don't. I don't want them. Come, I don't want them the to kind. cancel their, I don't want them to cancel their March membership. No, no, no. no come from the, no, come from the kind place, not the nice place. What would you say to that person? Oh, um, uh, when was the last time you logged something in Sugarwood? Let's say I logged, uh, I logged my split squats today. Why? Because um, I need to keep track of, I want to know, next time we do split squats, I want to know how much weight I used. You could do it in your phone. You could do that, right? You could do that You could do that in a Google document. You could do that on a pad of paper that's in your car. Yeah, but it's right there. What is the, nat what is the nature of Sugar Wad? Who else can see that? Everyone in Did the gym. Did you fist bump somebody else? 
Yeah, I fisted a few people. How did you know what weight to start with? I fisted a few people. That was good. <laughs> Until I walked right by that. <laughs> uh, I saw Joe, and Joe and I are usually around the same weight. So you're in competition with Joe? No, not no. I just used him as like a. I just used him as a as a gauge to oh, see. Okay. Maybe I should go. To see how heavy you should go. Right. How do you because find I, competition? Um, winners and losers. Okay. Okay. Winner and loser. well, who wins the open? Do you have a chance of winning the open? Did you have a chance of winning that split jerk workout? Uh. Uh, in the world? Sure. No. Then, then what's the difference? Well, why why should I pay why why pay the twenty dollars to do it if I'm not gonna win it? Why do you pay me two hundred dollars a month to come here and split jerk and you're not gonna be the best split jerker, but yet you still use the system which ranks you amongst everybody else in the gym? Uh because I want to get better and fitter and stronger. Okay. For myself. So then why not do it with the open? It's a worldwide leaderboard. I just gave you, how can you define a larger population by which will better aggregate your true relative proportional um, uh, level of skill, of fitness? How is a... Would you rather a product, would you rather use a product that has been tested on two people or 200 million people? 200, feel, 200 million feels like it gets an accurate value. So, accu so accuracy is something important to you? Yeah. Okay. We can keep going. I like this. We could. But then at the end of the day, but this is, this is great. Like it's, I think it's, yeah. because It has nothing to do with competition. That's an excuse. Right, like that. That's they could they could keep coming up with every excuse they could possibly want to. It is simply founded in some fear left unexplored. Yeah. And so it's not my job to make it safe. It's not my job. It's not your job. It's yeah. not my job at all. <laughs> yeah. It's not your job to make it safe. It's not my job. Your job to convince them yeah. that. It is worth it to them. If it's of value, then do it. All I'm saying is don't make an excuse and impose that upon an objective, unbiased methodology and system yeah. that it, as, the, as a structure, is faulty in its construction because it makes you feel a certain way good right like so that's really, yeah good go ahead so so basically by saying that you're not you don't want to compete or that you're you're basically coming up with excuses to not put yourself in a situation where i think you said before like i'm afraid of being judged well what are you what are you really being judged on like where right it's really like you said it's a very objective like you either have this or you don't, and now we've just set ourselves up a nice benchmark to prove whether or not are these things that you really want to get better at, right. and what's in the long term, what's what is getting better do for you, right? And so, regardless right. of, it is painful and uncomfortable and scary and like all of those things to be objectively assessed, because at the end of the day. And I'm, I'm not qualified uh, per any sort of sanctioning or uh, certifying body to psych psychologically make this statement. But at the end of the day, it challenges our perception of personal value and worth yeah. when we are judged. Because it might mean I'm, I'm not liked or I won't get invited or right like it, it, it you're gonna it, find out stuff it, you're gonna find out stuff about yourself that you probably don't want to hear but maybe should or find right, out and it, yeah it, it challenges that perception of our own ego and and if the ego has to actually face itself god forbid it gets destroyed and you know eliminated um but you see you see that process in action how violent i mean physically and emotionally violent 
people will get when you actually start to destroy their ego. Um, yeah. That's a that's a, also a whole nother conversation. Yeah. Either done, um, you know, exogenously or androgynously. So either like by consuming certain substances that will uh, unpack and destroy the egos, uh, AKA psychedelics, or androgynously through like you know, meditative practices or whatever. The violence with which people will resist that disillusion of the ego is yeah. fascinating. I mean, it's it's terrifying and like <laughs> extremely uncomfortable to watch and be a part of or personally experience, but it is completely uh, transformative because you quickly realize like, oh, all this shit that I've been carrying around or creating, I've been carrying around and creating this. A, nobody cares. Yeah, yeah. B, it's not real. And see yeah. if you put it down, like you don't have to carry it anymore. Doctor, doctor, hurts when I go like that. You know what he said to me? Don't stop do doing that. <laughs> yeah. Doctor, doctor, what's wrong with you? You're gonna die. Now I want a second opinion. Hey, Sid, you're ugly too. <laughs> <sighs> uh, yeah, I, um, yeah. I'll tell you, like I, uh, I definitely like my personally. My fitness is not. I can say it's not where it was a year ago. It's not, it's not where I would want it to be at this point in my life. Um, but you know, I think about you know everything that's been going on. Like I can come up with all the excuses in the world, but you know, I've made, I've made, I've made the choice to let some things s slip in favor of other things. And so I know going into this open, I remember even when I was the like when I was signing up for it, I'm like, like this is. I, it's funny. I think to myself, I was like, this is probably going to be like my worst open, what, whatever that means, right? This is going to be my worst open. And, uh, but I could not tell you for the life of me where I've placed in any open ever from a percentage wise or whatever. Um, and it's almost like that, that thought in the back of my head is like, like, what's the point of doing it if it's like, I'm really not in the best shape or even any shape that I want to be going into the open. Um, and I know it's going to, I don't know, maybe, I, maybe I'm maybe i not going to feel as good as I normally do, so why do it? And like I said, that little creep is in the back of my head sometimes going into it. But then I also remind myself, it's like, but, you know, that's all in my head. Like, no one's going to be standing around me being like, damn, he's really not in shape. Like, this opens really, like, crushing him. Like, man, he really sucks. I can't believe he tells us to do that. That's how, And these are all things that I hear in my head. Uh, yeah, like, that's a good point. Yeah. Like these are things I hear, like my mind is like, this is what people are gonna say. And really they're not. Like no one's thinking that. No one's saying that. And I and I don't, you know, I don't need to explain, you know, my situation to anyone else is like what I've been through in the last six months to a year. What they don't need to tell me what they've been through six the last six months to a year. Like they don't need to everyone's just kind of I think I always but I was excited to sign up because I always go back to Nicole said it one year about like skin in the game. Like if you if you pay that 20 bucks and you're in it, like you're in it. And now you're just going to give it whatever you got. And that's all that really matters. And then it really it just ends up being a good little baseline. But like, all right, well, now I have a clear cut idea of where I actually am using this thing that we do every year is using the benchmark. So it is like it's it's uh, um, kind of like what you were saying. It's uh, it's just you can come up with all these reasons to why it's not important. and But really, it's just the reasons you think it's not important is probably because there's things that you need to check with yourself that you maybe don't really want to face or don't really want to hear. And um, if it's not it's, important, it's just, then why not just do it? Right. Like if it's right? not a big like, deal. Like that, that in itself is oxymoronic of a statement to say, well, it's not important, so I'm just not going to do it. Well, you're going to do the workout anyway. Right. right? It's what you're all are programming for Friday, most likely and Monday. So, and like, and it's, and we're making yeah. it like we're, we're making it's, it's a community event. Like, I'm not saying you know, follow the herd, but I'm saying like, you know, we're all we're follow the herd, but like, like follow the herd, I, man. Like, I mean, there's, following there's, the herd like, is a pretty, it's, it's actually, it's, it's why we exist. Like, you are anthropological, uh, evolutionarily designed to be somebody that knows how to follow a herd. Like, <laughs> that is what has, thank you, ancestors, for knowing <laughs> how to follow a herd. <laughs> like that's why we have the genetic 
physiology that we have. Like, okay, so as a metaphor, like, well, I don't want to follow her. I want to be an individual. Like, why? Like, what, yeah. what has that ever gotten you? Nothing. <laughs> like, you ha- you ha- you live in a house, in a dwelling, in a structure, because the people who came before you knew how to follow her. You live in the suburbs. You go to the city, right? Like, there is infrastructure. Like, all of the things that you take for granted is because we are a species that knows how to follow those who have come before us. Like, <laughs> I just, that that whole metaphor has such a problematic, I don't want to follow her. Right, no, like, that's not it. Like, you're wrong. <laughs> you do we, want to follow her. Because you if you're not, you're probably, anyway, go ahead. Yeah, you yeah go, you're probably you not following this one. You're probably following another one, and you're still following something somewhere. Right, right. Like, oh, are you fucking kidding me? And trust me, there's worse herds to be following than the people that are doing the crossfit. Yeah, right. <laughs> they, have better, they have better health markers. They're gonna live longer. They're probably happier. They're better at sex. Like, I yeah. don't know. Like, list it out. There's still yeah. a lot of benefits to following this herd. Yeah, so I'll don't. tell you what. Don't follow the herd. But I'll give you a kickback the rest of this month's money to find a different place to hang out. <laughs> that's a little oh, offensive. Okay. Just, <laughs> just cuz they don't want to do the open like I get. Guys, it. guys, he's not remember uh, he's not on the he's not on the LLC anymore. Just that's FYI. That's anyone that's 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 <laughs> uh, but I mean and so that like I, I guess the habit of um the starting the open or starting something like the open without having taken the time to, as you said um, earlier, and then we'll loop back and I'll ask you like where this all came from, without first establishing what will make this open a win, successful, of value, um, worth your time, worth yeah. your energy, make the assumption going into it that there is something to be learned or gained from it there won't be no there will be no answers you're not going to have like a complete and utter like i made it i'm successful yes i'm done like that's not what i'm talking about but i'm talking about that there will be something i don't know that you will learn at the end of it that you didn't know before because you imbued a sense of curiosity around the process dare we say define something in that um, context for why you're doing it yeah and i can't imagine anything you do in your life that if you don't if you do that prior to starting that it doesn't yield something of value and yeah. that process, that iterative process done over and over, 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 over again is living a life of purpose and value and meaning, right? Yeah. Like, isn't that the whole thing? So these, so constant, anyways, like self, these constant self-assessments of like, this is where I was, this is where I am, this is where I'm going, and then checking that in again later. This is where I am, this is where I was, this is where I'm going. Yeah. Like yeah. And if, and, and if at some point, and if it's like, oh, shit, I'm... I'm way off tracking or I'm, I'm just, I'm not. Yeah. Like that, the discernment of deliberation, like being able to recognize when you are actually deliberative or when you are just following the herd. Right. Right. (laughs) And for our radio listeners, I did (laughs) bunny quotes. They were very big. <laughs> he even like they took he up the whole very street. Clearly, <laughs> <laughs> they were. I just felt like I just felt like you were tickling my tickling my head there. <laughs> <Think> <laughs> of, get your fingers out of my earlobes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah. So we're. Um, I mean, like we talked before we hit record again. Yeah. Possibly material available to you for the yeah. paid version <laughs> of this podcast. I still never sent the. Uh, I never clicked on the confirmation link for that whole um, uh, Patreon Monetiz- account. Monetization. Of, yeah. Where did this come from? So this came, and it's funny. Like even talking about it more, the more I, I, I'm kind of even linking it other, like even combining the two, but just came from like over the last year, you know, taking taking on the affiliate solo, 
and um, having a conversation with uh, Marcus, who's one of the 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 mentors, I guess you call them, through Affiliate U. And I'm just kind of I'm looking at the business, and you know, like if you look at the bottom line, like you know, you want to see a nice high number on that scoreboard, and maybe the number's not exactly where I expect it to be after the course of a year. And I was kind of frustrated by it. And I was looking at it as like, uh, you know, what am I doing wrong? And even a sense of failure, really. Like I personally, you know, between you and me, Jack, like I, I felt like I had a lot to prove to myself and other people that I could do this without you. And like, it, you know, it was, and it was, uh, and so when I look at it in certain aspects, I felt like I was not doing that. And it was kind of a, a sucky feeling because I've been putting a lot of like a lot of time and effort into it and sacrificed a lot to put into it. And so having this conversation with Marcus and just saying like, this is, this is how I feel and it doesn't feel awesome. And he kind of helped me take a step back and said, well, you know, why did you get into this? And, you know, why did you start this in the first place? And I knew that, you know, there were certain things that I wanted to do differently from, a system standpoint because they made sense for you, but they didn't make sense for me. And he's like, do you feel like you've got there? And like, do you feel like that this thing is running the way that you need it to run best for you? And I said, yeah, for, for the most part, I think, you know, I'm about there. And he said, do you feel like the gym represents you now as an individual, maybe not necessarily you and Jack anymore, but it sticks, it, it speaks to what you want it to be. I said, yeah, I do feel like that. And it's uh do you feel like you're getting to a place where, you know, you're from a from a staff? Like, are they developing the way that you want them to develop? Are you able to get yourself to a place where you're able to find some sort of balance between work and life and all that? And I said, yeah, I feel like, you know, when I look back to where it was like day one, April 1st to today. Yeah, like I'm, you know, and I'm not coaching 97% of the classes. And uh, um and so he said, you know, maybe that bottom line isn't where you want it to be. And that's a number that will fluctuate. It's going to ebb and flow. It's going to have its peaks and valleys. But you're putting these things in place to that you have control over. And those will take care of that in the long run. So if you look at all these things that you just said yes to, aren't those successes, aren't those wins over the course of the year? And like you said that to me, and it like hit me. I was like, that is because he's like, I've, I mean, like I said, I've, it's been a lot. It's been a lot. Well, it's, yeah. And it's also, it's, it's, A, not even been a year, but it's a year that, um, that you get to take credit for each one of those yeses as individual, as, as successes that were no longer influenced by my presence. Right. or right or the previous influence of um, of the business in a different form right. you know what I mean? where it was two owners and is now a single owner and so where... I, don't, I hope you mentioned that or i hope you guys talk a little bit about that in that conversation yeah. too that you have to re i mean it's kind of like somebody um who is like a you know a games level athlete and you know they're in the top 10 for two years and then they like have a major car accident or and i'm not saying me leaving was traumatic i'm just saying there's like a major right. change to to the to the system to the operating system yeah and coming back and not giving an appropriate amount of recognition of that change and assessing success performance happiness whatever on the last time prior to that change right like that's that's an artificial and yeah. ineffective comparison of two distinctly different things so yeah. even i mean i would argue your bottom line as a variable or a metric of measurement it's a real metric i mean yeah it has business. value, it's a, yeah. Right, it's a, exactly. It's a business in a capitalistic structure that is based on ins and outs, and the bottom line is the bottom line. That's why, I mean, yeah. metaphorically, it's the bottom line. The bottom line. <laughs> right, and yes, it, it goes up and down. 
And so if you, I guess what would be more important is have you clearly identified the variables that influence that bottom line, one. Yeah. Two, have you identified the factors that go to influence the variables that influence that bottom line? Yeah. Two, and have you identified the species of actions that you can take to influence the factors that influence those variables that influence the bottom line? Right. And so, so that would be like step one and then right. step two, changing a few of those things and seeing how they influence the factors that influence the variables. And does that change the bottom line? I feel yeah. like I'm kind of defining 10 general skills, <laughs> nine fundamental movements, um, hierarchy of fitness, because in the end, CrossFit is a measure of work capacity across broad modal and time domains and i influence that work capacity by doing functional movements at high intensity hmm. this is interesting. weird Welcome and back. i can and as long as i have observe, you ever thought about right? yeah and if i observe measure and repeat the methodology while continuing to eat in accordance with the CrossFit methodology, and I'm not gonna repeat that. And I do that three to five times a week over the course of the rest of my lifetime, then I'm not worried about my blood pressure. I'm not chasing my cholesterol levels. I'm not chasing my weight. I'm not chasing this. I measure it. How long does it take me to do the workout here? How long does it take me to do the workout here? And if those variables were the same, and the only thing I changed were these factors which are influencing the variable, then I can make the change that I'm fitter today than I was yesterday, then it's working. And right. so your bottom line is kind of like the very big measure of the business's fitness, right? but not the means by which you got to that fitness. Yeah. And so that, I mean, it seems like that's not a far leap to kind of meld those two conceits into like you know equatable things and what and kind of what a point that he ended up getting to was it, as well as like what's nice is now that it's it's at this point where and I, you know it was you know, going into it was like the business wasn't broken by any stretch like going to it's not like we were you know like it's not like the business was failing or we were like hemorrhaging money or anything like we came in a good place and now it's just a how can we tailor this to like fit me better and not my schedule and my process and only being one person instead of two like we we're able to really kind of balance the power before and now it's all here so it's like by no means was it and they they would say that sometimes like if your business is broken bring it to affiliate you it's like well, my business isn't broken like i just want to figure out these new things but he said but now you've got all these things in place that now it's so much easier to identify where like you said before like it's it's everything's clear cut is the i see this here and i see this here and i see this here oh here's this thing i should probably tweak this a little bit make that adjustment as opposed to it just feeling like this there's all these different things going on and i'm not sure really what it is and trying to find it hard to kind of define where does the adjustment need to be made is it weightlifting is it gymnastics is it cardiovascular respiratory yeah. all those things and so that's um and so it was it was good like that was a good kind of reassessment and then even like so like we said 100 like you said taking that into your fitness or as an athlete there's all these kind of checks and balances along the way if you just every once in a while take a step back and look at where are you lacking and and, and so right work. like yeah um, and that's a great great move great transition and i just yeah. had this thought and that's why I, you know, rudely interrupted you um would be <laughs> sort of the um keeping it with the business, but I'm the person, I don't like to do the open, ah, whatever it's, you know, it's, I don't know, like competition, blah, blah, blah. Okay. You're measuring your fitness via one, one set of eyes, basically from one perspective. Yeah. Right. So, um, I can't, I'm trying to think of like a, a good analogy, but like, so in a sense, nobody has any sort of relative concept if they're looking at this video if I'm tall or if I'm short, right? You don't really know how high this, 
than a sauna is. You don't really right. know how high my ceilings are. You don't really know what perspective I'm with with the camera. So if somebody were to say to you, is he tall? Is he short? Those are those are superlative words. They're comparative words. Well, compared to his dog, yeah, he's pretty tall. Like, you know, compared to a three-year-old child, I guess, like, he's kind of tall. Yes. But compared to Eric, no, he's he's relatively short. So, like, everything is contextualized with a perspective of, are you fit? Well, I'm, I'm fit for what I want to be able to do. But that's not how CrossFit as a methodology defines fitness. Yeah. Right? It defines it in a in a context or within a construct of work capacity. And work is your ability to do move a force or impact a force across a distance within some sort of time, over some sort of time. So it is work capacity. And work over time is a power output. Sorry, that's power, power over time. Work. Like your ability to do work. And if I can do more work than you, then I am fit. Regardless so of I, I, all those other variables. Right. I was thinking about this. And I figure at some point we need to get a whiteboard out or else oh, we're yeah. just not really having a CrossFit podcast. Right. So the yeah. other day there was a workout. Um, uh, 18 something. It was a dumbbell movement. Uh, clean. That's right. Um, alternating crazy ass movement i really liked it um it was alternating hang clean and jerks with a dumbbell alternating 18 alternating hang clean and jerks uh, with a dumbbell um 18 toes to bar or maybe that's it it was 18 burpees was this an open workout nope uh totally felt like an open workout Um, yeah i remember like 18 toes to bar so um uh, if you can read my handwriting, 18 minute AMRAP, 18 hang alternating clean and jerks with a 50 pound, 35 pound dumbbell, 18 burpees. Actually, it might have been 18 bar or a dumbbell facing burpees. Yeah. Um, so, kind of messing with that, like you got to face and whatever, and then 18 toes to bar. So, the goal was uh, four plus, but optimally six rounds. And if you're not going to get at least three rounds, you need to reassess and think about scaling it. So the scale was, and I would ask, like, well, what do you think the scale should be? Yeah, I'll tell you, because it's programming and they're coaching those of us that are using the program. Sometimes they'll scale the weight. So they'll say 35 and 20 pound dumbbells. Or they'll say scale the time or scale whatever. They said keep 18 minute AMRAP, keep the 50 pound dumbbells, reduce the rep scheme to 12 12 12. so 18 minute amrap now 12 12 12 of all the same three movements the idea being what makes this workout so potent to be able to get four plus optimally six maybe six plus three minutes around one minute for each of those movements Mm -hmm. you're moving at about two and a half to three seconds per movement obviously those burpees are going to be a little bit slower clean jerks are a little bit faster toes bar a little bit faster it's about three seconds a rep right that's going to get you the six rounds right i got four plus so i was happy with that it was right about four minutes around which worked out for me but i had to go to singles on those toes to bar pretty quickly but i got much cleaner and smoother with the hang clean and jerk dumbbell thing right the guy who's about the same age as me i think on the leaderboard who he and i will often scale and we'll both like follow the fucking rules i'm following the herd says yeah. scale the number i scale the number he kind of bounces in about the same spot as i do he scaled it i went four plus rounds he scaled it to 12 reps a movement he got six plus about the same if you do the math i got three more reps than he did doing it the rx way yeah oh no maybe no no sorry he got three more reps than i did doing it the scaled way um, right than i did the rx way which one was better which one was better yeah which one was the better choice 
Uh, he got three more reps than you. They're yeah. Pretty, I mean, they're pretty damn close. They're pretty damn close. And actually, it was closer to ten. Like I think it was like ten. It was it was a, it was a it was a factor. It was a noticeable factor. <laughs> Either way, let's say it was three more reps. Yeah. By the methodology of CrossFit as a training methodology, he did more work than I did. We both worked for eighteen minutes. We moved the same loading. We did the same movements. Just by tweaking the rep scheme, though, he got, we'll say, three more reps than I did. He did more work. So from a training methodology, his choice of scaling it to 12-12-12 was a better training choice. What then, who is fitter than who? He is fitter than you. But is he? We didn't do the same workout. He got more work done in the same amount of time. From a training methodology, his choice was better. But who was fitter than who? We can't make that claim. Oh, I got you. We didn't do yeah. the same workout. The it same was workout. a different. It was a different. It wasn't a test. It was training, right? Yes. Like, and so in the end, you're asking the wrong question. The open is asking a question. Yes. Who's training for the last 350 years, 50 years, 350 days, if the open is 21, 365, 340 days, who's training methodology, whose approach to the training, whose consistency within the training methodology, blah, 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 is yielding a better product to be able to say that they are fitter than something else, someone else. And if it's just me, you're competing. You're competing against you competing from against last you. year, right? You're competing yeah. from your previous performance in other opens when they do the repeat, blah, blah, blah. Like the tr if every day I come into the gym, I'm comparing myself to somebody else, you are missing the whole effing point. Yeah. It's training, it's a training methodology. Most of us get three weeks out of the year to put our training methodology to the test yeah. because the choice around how to scale, how to modify, how to do whatever is removed. The yeah. choice around, well, hold on, give me like 10 more minutes to warm up. Ah, clock is starting in 15 We're seconds. Going. Pick up your fucking rope or lose out on those 10 seconds that you're not picking up on your rope, right? Like yeah. I'm removing all of those other variables that are 100 valid to have in the training but at the end of the day training's over it's the test now and yeah. the test is valid because it's unified for everybody it's standardized yeah. for everybody whether on the foundations which was one of the greatest things that they did was add that because if you've been doing crossfit for six months a year 99% of the people are going to be able to do the foundations and I get it. Not everybody can. And that's actually fine too, yeah. because then, okay, great. Let's say to this year is your first line in the sand of a benchmark, the 2023 open. I couldn't even do the foundations thing, but for the yeah. last year, I've been coming to Fairwinds CrossFit. I come three to four times a week. I usually have Eric or Ariel or whoever is my coach. And I'm doing the open this year and I'm doing everyone as foundations and I'm going to try one, maybe a scale. Right. And then the next year I get, and so it's like, and I know that sounds very like I drank the Kool-Aid. Well, welcome to, welcome to the party, yeah. of course, yeah. like, but that's the You're point, here. right? Like yeah. this question is a training question, efficacy, efficiency of approach to training. What affiliate you did for you for the last year, is this what you now have the opportunity to do each month for yourself moving forward is does your bottom line improve does your retention improve does your average client value improve does your time home with the kids improve yeah. right like blah 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 like there again those are the variables or the metrics by which you're going to measure but at the end of the day if your bottom line does continue to get worse or just kind of like stay the same, and you can honestly say that you've been applying 
we're pushing on these things in order to improve it and it doesn't improve, well then it's not like a judgment of you as a human being, but you could say like, well, no, <laughs> what yes. you're doing is not working. Right. So that, that's not, you're a bad person. You're dumb. You're like, no, 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 yes. no, no. These aren't working. Yes. So why not? What's not working about? Well, it doesn't fit my market. It's not the right approach for the blah, blah, blah. It's it. Right. Okay. Adjust. Doctor, doctor, it hurts when I go like that. You know what? So yeah. Stop doing that. Yeah, but doctor, I really want to be able to use my arm. Okay, well, let's look at your shoulder. Let's, you know, you have arthritis. You you don't have a shoulder joint. Like, there's, there's other things we could do in there to fix that. Maybe you can go like this, right? Like, it's, so that aspect of being afraid to look at something as a measure of failure or success in of itself is less a question. And I said, don't judge the fact that, that you're being challenged to, to measure it. Explore the fact that that terrifies you because yeah. that, that might mean something else that, that yeah. right. Like that's the thing left unexplored that look, then great. Close your eyes, put your head back into the sand and just go through life unexamined. That's, I guess that is your choice in the state of the world that we live in. Yeah. I, I don't think that's a very valid or useful pursuit. Not very so, courageous. Yeah. Yeah. Don't blame the methodology or the, the system, which yeah. is offering you a voluntary opportunity to look at that, to test that, to gauge it, to measure it or whatever, and say that it's dumb or bad or wrong, right? And give yourself some grace. Like, you're also allowed to be afraid. Like, you're also allowed to feel like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> That's not how I wanted, it's not how I thought I looked. Like, I, ah, oh, shit. That's okay. Okay. But, but exactly. Like, yeah. you're allowed to feel that. You're allowed to say, like, fuck, why does that make me feel like that? God, I don't like this. All right. All right. I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big kid. Like, yeah. now. Okay. So how do I, how do I not get surprised? Well, look more often um, and then determine this is how I can impact that or change it. That person looks like how I want to look. That person moves how I want to move. That person has things or appears to have things that I want to have, right? Like there's examples out there and be like, how'd you get there? What'd you do? What, what teach me? Who's your coach? What kind of stuff? Anyway, like that, yeah. that side of it of, Hey, you don't have to invent this. Like it's already out there. Yeah. I think the open as a, as a method, to get to, yeah it's there it's like, there it's, it's all yeah. it's all there for you it makes it i don't want to say easy but it like makes it easier for you to really recognize it makes it simple right. it makes it very simple they've removed as many variables as possible because yeah. it's the variables and the choice of each of those variables that gets complicated if i can only if I, the only choice i have to make is to read the movement descriptions show up with my gear and physically be there. That's it. That's it. And in, in 12 to 18, maybe 20, hopefully shorter, seven-ish, nine-ish would be awesome uh, <laughs> minutes. <laughs> I have my result immediately, right? Yeah. Like it's an immediate feedback loop of, nope. <laughs> nice. Your 75 to 90 minutes you have spent four to six times a week for the last year have been a waste of your time. <laughs> And then bare minimum, I'll throw this out there in the in this for the sake of the intramural open. If you are if you are concerned about your placement or your performance, don't sweat it, man. Because bare minimum showing up in the in the way that our open is structured. If you're worried about letting your team down by not performing as well, I'm throwing up the big bunnies yeah, too. Bunny uh, doesn't matter because. From a, from a score standpoint, you get five points just for doing the workout. 
those top placement points, one, two, three points, those are those are tiny compared to actually just showing up and doing it. And that's kind of the purpose too with that the way we structured it too is we're celebrating in a big way showing up and doing it. Like Hell yeah. And and the and the bonus points for being a top finisher, they're there is just a way to like yeah, they're you know, it's it's another if anything, maybe you push a little bit harder knowing that maybe you're right on the cusp of that, whether you're doing the scaled or RX or whatever. So, um, yeah, it's just uh, the open overall. It's, I think it's you and I talk all the time. We love the open. As an affiliate, it's it was, like, exhausting to try to run. But for the, the, the purpose of the open at the end of the day has so many wonderful benefits. Um, that, you don't, uh, you yeah. don't exist. The affiliate doesn't exist. Yeah if the open doesn't exist at this stage in the game, in my opinion. Yeah, that makes sense. Like the affiliate yeah. as it as it is and as it exists in 2023 does not exist if Greg Glassman and Tony Buddy and Dave Castro and whoever else was part of that team. I don't, I don't know. Dave recently kind of went on some history of it and he actually gave some yeah. shout outs to Tony. But yeah. um, if they don't, if they don't create this idea of the open in 2011, the affiliate model does not exist the way it exists now in 2023. And yeah. it does not get to uh, current CEO Dave Falls, um, or Dan Falls, Dan Falls yeah. um, goal of 30 million people doing CrossFit by 2030, right? Yeah. 30 by 30. Said, um, yeah. Like it is, it is the it is the avenue, the medium of exposure for enough of the world population to get them to the number that they want which is 30 million and then the the secondary and tertiary effects of that 30 million is feasibly uh, valid and saying it is it is a global change it will have global ramifica ramifications to the improved health of the population, excuse me, of the population, if they can get there. And yes. if, if as an affiliate, and this is my, like, I push on you and I would push on people in the affiliate infrastructure ecosystem. If making the choice to participate in the intramural open does not mean that you also choose to pay your $20 for the CrossFit open, you are a shithead who is stealing capacity from the very structure and infrastructure that is supporting your choices in your exactly. way of life that's and so that's my very very un, very not so nice way to not say nice that. but that is like it is the person who steals food from the grocery store when they do the self-checkout thing yeah. the very convenience that you are enjoying happens because people don't take advantage of it right like so it's it you have it's quid pro quo it is transactional you have to give to get yeah yeah or else it just doesn't exist and in the end crossfit doesn't actually have to exist for any of us to get the benefit of the methodology 90 percent of it is free online you don't have to do anything now granted that the internet exists somebody's paying somewhere right somebody right? some cost is being inferred upon somewhere <laughs> but the simple fact is it's the methodology exists and it's out there and nobody has to pay for it if they don't want to yeah but the value of the thing as more than the sum of its parts costs money it, 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 there is a cost to that gestalt existed. And so if I can pay my $20 to CrossFit.com, games.crossfit.com to participate in it, and I can pay, right, I'm going to do that because then I get those three tests that I didn't know were coming. I don't know the, I know what Fran is. I know what Helen is. I know what Grace is. I know what the girls are. I know what Filthy 50 is. Like I know the benchmarks. And I can use those as a benchmark each year to test my fitness. But I know what they are. Yeah. And not knowing what is coming out of the open is an unmeasurable, uh, effective element of that test that is irreplaceable 
that's what I'm paying my 20 bucks for. I'm yeah. paying my 20 bucks for somebody to surprise me. I will drop $25 at the goddamn movie theater to go see some shitty movie by The Rock. I know exactly what's going to happen. I know every element of that movie. I haven't seen a single second of it, but I know exactly what's going to happen. I haven't seen I it, but I've it. seen it. <laughs> exactly. And I will do it. I know exactly what that popcorn is going to taste like, but there is just something about the newness of that experience. That's worth 20 bucks to me. Give me 20 time. bucks for three weeks for three new tests. Yeah. And the way that they're structured, done. Easy. Easy. Like, I, I, I'll pay for somebody else. I'll tell you what, somebody leaves a comment or a new subscriber, you get somebody tell me this, I will pay. And they haven't paid, I will pay for their open. Like, I'll yep. just, that's 20 bucks. I'll put there you like, go. 20 in my wallet. Take it. Oh, that's not my wallet. I'll take 20 <laughs> in my wallet and I will put it on the table. <laughs> What's that doing I over there? It. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I would also, so in that same vein, pay the 25 bucks for this damn intramural thing too. Right? Like, like it's the same, it's just a scaled down version. It's yeah. not even scale, but you know what I mean? Like it's just yeah. the next level down. Like, yeah. and somebody could say, well, where does it end? Well, it ends when it stops being a value to you. Yeah. Right. Like that intramural open is of so much value to the members of your affiliate. Like, oh my God, like it's so freaking cool. I actually had a little FOMO and I'm a little jealous, but I'm holding off on like, because I'm not a member of the affiliate. Right. right? So I'm, I'm not part of that team yeah that would be a choice that i would make have to make like no i'm gonna start coming i'm gonna be a member of the affiliate right like that would be and then yeah you get to quid pro quo you gotta pay to play like you yep. get to be a part of this you don't get to be a part of this thing without being a part of the other things i think it's just it. yeah 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 it's as simple as that really if you boil it down don't be a shithead Pay the twenty bucks. <laughs> just, just pay the twenty bucks. Right? Yeah, like, that's good. I, it really, it's, it's that, that sense of, and not to get too like judgmental, right? But like, it's like that, that hidden sense of entitlement that like, things have been made so easy for us that I deserve yeah. the right to have access to this, 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 this. this. Yeah. It's like. No, no, you don't. Uh, you don't. <laughs> like, no, like you, you know what? You, you, like, I would almost be like, no, you don't get to do the open workouts. You get to ride the echo bike for the next sixty minutes while the rest of the class. Holy shit! Can you, can you imagine doing that? Like, all right, everyone who signed up for the open, we're going to be doing this open workout. All the rest of you, I think they're go home that... or you're going to row a ten k. And when you're done, do not talk to anybody doing the open. Don't look at them. Do not cheer for them. Go home. I think there are people there. There are several people at the gym. If there were ten people that didn't sign up, and I said, for those of you who don't sign up, you don't get into the workout. You have to sign the echo bike for sixty minutes. There are a couple of people that would pay for every single person that didn't sign up for the open just so that no one had to do that. That's how much they yeah, go <laughs> like how horrible, right? Like, like it's like, hey, you're gonna do you're gonna do um you know one minute on, 30 seconds off for the next uh 45 minutes. So you're gonna do echo bike intervals instead of doing the open. Yeah. Uh, Joe would do it. Joe would do it. He'd pay 20 bucks for the open and still do the he's like, can I <laughs> Can, can I, I do that? Wait, can I do those intervals too? Can I do that now? <laughs> Echo Joe. Uh, but the, like uh, anyway, that's that's my I mean, that's my two cents. You know what that's worth? Two cents. Two cents. Uh, but it, it it just have a dime. Yeah, there you go. So you can yeah. get it five times. Um, how do you like that quick minute? Uh, yeah. It's it, it seems to me it is that. Uh, choose choose whichever perspective by which you would like to see the world from and hmm. unfortunately at any one time we, we can only see from this one perspective and i i may like that perspective but at some point maybe i don't and so i can i can just bitch and moan and say like i just i don't, I don't like this i don't like this view anymore or I can just do this Oop. and shift my perspective. Where'd you go? Right? Like, right? Like there's 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 all this other stuff that's happening around me 
and I can choose to just look this way, or I hey. can I can just keep changing. And, and life is uh, if I can uh, let's go back to a simpler time. Life is just a big old game of peekaboo. You can choose to look at it or you don't. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of like that. No, oh. no. Oh. Uh, yeah. I can keep doing that. You could, you could, but unfortunately, <laughs> fortunately for it's us, it's way cuter with the kid. It's way cuter with the yeah. kid. Uh, Axel loves it. I don't know what everyone else is probably. Yeah. <laughs> Everett's getting a little tired of it. Yeah. Uh, but that, nice. yeah, and I think uh, Marcus did. I, th I think if you were ever questioning, was uh, was your participation in Best Hour worth it? I think you just answered your own question yeah. in that conversation with Marcus. Yeah. Like, I feel like that is going to have ramifications, uh, echoes of worth for you for the next three, four, five, 10, 15 years. You know what I mean? Like that conversation yeah. is going to be one of those that sits with you for a very long time Yeah. because it's so simple and it's so true and it's so applicable to so, other elements yeah. yeah it's scalable to so many other situations yeah 100 percent. i've been thinking about it probably every day since that conversation just in other aspects not just the gym itself so yeah, yeah. he's he's, he's, a hell, he's a hell of a coach he's a good one that gersey fella yeah that's um, and in a sense it it may he what makes him such a good coach is he could have been really nice to you he could have said yeah. Right. But instead, he was very honest and he was very honest with a kindness that respected who you are and what you have stated are your goals. Yeah. And so that's and he and he made you do the work in reflecting it back on you. Yeah. And so, again, the open isn't a person, but as a as a system and as a as a opportunity, it's kind of doing the same thing to the rest yeah. of us. Yeah. And that's pretty scary. Yeah. But uh, that's where they say life yeah. begins, right? Oh, I do. Oh, God. It's tomorrow, right? Oh, God. Okay, real quick. <laughs> oh, oh, it comes out. Oh, they come out tomorrow. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. There's no that point ever. So much. <laughs> <laughs> There's no point in ever doing this, but. We're gonna do it anyway. If you okay. could, it let's just let's say there's a new movement this year. Do you have any guess on what a new movement could be this year that shows up? Something over the. Wall, I think that wall facing handstand push up. That wall facing handstand push up because that was that was in the games last year. That wasn't in the quarterfinals, right? Yeah, and it was deficit. They hit it with a deficit right from the get go with that one. Yeah, it was beautiful. I, um, I, think, I think shuttle runs. That's my so guess. I just think that's I, I think they'll show up again in uh, quarter quarterfinals or uh, or online semis for age group. It's just it's such a shitty thing to do to you at the affiliate. You think so? I mean, it's twenty five. It's twenty five foot. It's twenty five feet of floor space. It just depends on what they couple it with. Yeah. Right. Like in the quarters, it was fucking shuttle runs and rope climbs. You know what I mean? Yeah. So now you're asking an affiliate to have. It was ropes at the right length and, and and rigged up at the right place. And so if it's shuttle runs and width and, at the same time too, yeah. Right. It's shuttle yeah. runs and it's that what's on the other end of that and that yeah. makes it. You're right. Like as far it's no different than handstand walks, which they've had in the past. It's no different than anything that requires some like what if it was like place. shuttle runs, shuttle runs and a dumbbell snatch and a and a handstand walk? That would be kind of cool. Like if you, you shuttle run back and forth, do something, handstand walk back and forth, shuttle run back and forth, do something, handstand or, walk back or and forth. Dumbbell snatch, shuttle run, wall facing handstand push up. But again, that's so by adding that third part, like oh, yeah. fuck. Now I gotta where do you it's funny, you know, it's funny. I think or two, i in my mind, I'm like or it's like here's how it oriented at this at my affiliate. But every affiliate is so different. So but what if you're not right? So it's yeah. That's the part, and then you got to figure like people that have to video it. So now you've got to orient and set up a video camera that can cover 25 feet of distance and capture with enough fidelity the person's movement. Yeah. So I think they're a great thing. I think um, Mayhem has a lot of 
we did shuttle runs actually yesterday, which were great. It was shuttle runs and burpee box jump overs. It was a really cool little combination of couplets or really cool combination couplet. Um, but it's gymnastic gymnastics. No, I guess monostructural gymnastics. It's monostructural, yeah. So, so yeah, so if like, if they were to combine it with something that is gymnastic-y and weightlifting, or just weightlifting, or just gymnastic-y, yeah, it's a great um, yeah. capacity tester because they're just sneakily sucky. I think adding that little like touch the floor, like make sure your feet are across the line and touch the floor, that just little bit adds. Like what they do is like there's there's sort of like everybody can do the shuttle runs at a certain speed where they don't really impact much right. but if you want to be able to get enough time to like actually make them not make them not a detriment in the sense of from a time suck they cost so much more when yeah. doing something else yeah. and so that's where they're a great movement to test capacity yeah but can I get that same test with a row? Can I get that same test with dubs? Like that's the, so it's from a bang for your buck in the open stage. I'm not sure. I mean, this. I say, I think I agree. I think I was, cause I was thinking about that shuttle runs. It's like, I feel like you could get the same, a 25 foot shuttle run. You could get the same stimulus from like a 30 to 50 double unders. Yeah. Like if that, right. Yeah. Like you're still getting, you're still getting the heart rate up. You're still even kind of getting that little bit of a ground and pound. Yeah, um, or even like something a new could be like single foot alternating singles. Oh yeah. So like uh, Rocky style. Yeah. So like you have yeah. to like you can, you can jump on left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, single under. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know. I mean, everyone sees jump rope and they assume double unders is like ca right. Careful. So there's. Careful. I mean, he's careful. proven there's all kinds of stuff yeah. that from a skill set, it's a pretty easy skill. Yeah. And especially if you've been doing double unders, yeah. you can transition back to it pretty easily. Yeah. But it's like, it's just going to be weird and it's hard. But then it's not. Anyway, no, I, yeah. I think, um, again, this is why I pay my 20 bucks. I'm going to pay my 20 bucks so that I can not I know just the, see it. I know but the, I'm, I know I'm the, accountable. Yeah. I know The Rock is in it, but <laughs> Superman might show up. But then again, who cares? It's going to be the same thing. It's going to be I the know, same movie. I know that the Flash is. I know the Flash is in it, and then we know that Barry Allen is going to show up in an alternate universe. But now I also know that Michael Keaton Batman is going to be in. Yeah, with I saw that preview. <laughs> <laughs> that like, movie, oh. that 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 quick clip of the uh, "I'm Batman," like that. Yeah. That. I'm already worth the price of admission for me. The movie could suck. I just want to see that line again. Yeah. So you're so gonna cool. drop. Yeah, you're gonna drop that twenty-five, probably forty bucks for that for the evening because you know yeah. you know you can go out and get some to eat before and then go to yeah. the movie and then get some snacks there. Yeah. So I bring my own snacks. Thank you. Just shove them in your jacket pocket. Yeah. Oh, this candy bar melted. That's okay. No one. <laughs> 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 That's the way it goes. All right, let's get these. Uh, a long one today. Let's get these gratitude. It was. Yeah, I have no idea. Actually, I do have a one o'clock thing. Yeah, um, we we'll make them quick. Let's do this. Uh, what did I say my gratitude was? I said it was uh, something about me. I think, which yeah. feels about right. Oh yeah, yeah, it was the um. You sent me a text message, but it was a voice text. <laughs> voice text. I yeah. Just, I thought I was so happy because I was like, I imagined your day at that point just being absolute chaos. Yeah. As you were packing up trying to leave for uh, Massanutten, and I was like, but he probably had the idea, didn't want to lose the idea, but didn't want to take the time to text it, but didn't want to call me because then that possibly gives you the, uh, the misconception that, that you want me to call you back. And yeah. so the, the voice text memo is genius. And I was so grateful for your willingness and your ability to have self-assessed kind of where you're at with uh, with stuff. And then, you and you got it to me on Friday. So I listened to it as I was walking out from teaching classes at the academy, classes at the academy. And, uh, and so I've been thinking about this conversation since Friday. And I was cool. like, that was really cool. So it was, uh, it was, it was well done, man. And it, like I said, <laughs> it, it, it begged for a response via text, right? Yeah. Or if I had, did a quick memo back or a gif or whatever yeah. but it was very clear don't fucking call me 
don't expect me to call you back. And I probably won't even get a response to you via text message because I'm, I'm just sending this low stakes. This is my idea and I'm moving on. Moving on. Yeah, it was yeah. awesome. Cool. Yeah, mine uh huge simple. I um I so if you watch the Super Bowl, I really enjoyed the Super Bowl. It was a good game. And the next morning, all ESPN was like covering was like that one pass interference call at the end of the game, like ruined the game, blah blah. You know, it's like they you know, the Eagles lost the game because of that. And that was all ESPN. Like that wasn't even like just Eagles fans. That was like <laughs> and it was just like stop. And I loved watching um the the eagles a lot bunch of the eagles players interviews afterwards that they kept getting asked about the call and they're like we gave up 24 points in the second half we had a 10 point lead we gave up the longest punt return in nfl history like like we're not like even the coach was like we can't we're not going to hang our hat on that and it's just been so easy to blame the refs these last like officiating has been terrible and i just i loved the um I don't know. You could tell, like, watching the Eagles players, it was kind of – they're like, yeah, it sucked the loss to the Super Bowl, but they 100% like are like, all right, cool, we lost. Let's take this, build on it for next year. See you guys next year. It's gonna and it was, for a great. It's going to make for a great story next year. Yeah, like I like I I do not like the Eagles at all, but uh, <laughs> but I it hurts I like, you to give them any sort of praise, <laughs> right? Like they're not, and I don't want to say they were like gracious losers, but it was like they weren't just spewing the same like, oh, you know, they went out there and they were the better team, and you know, we, this and that, this and that, and they were just like, hey, you know, it was it's been a it was a cool week. Unfortunately, it didn't work out the way we wanted. See you guys next year. And it was just so, it was so. What you're saying is they sound as if they live a life of honest examination of their uh, ability to hit or reach the goals that they have stated for themselves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. interesting. Yeah. And would yeah. you, and would you argue that in that living of that examined life that they exude a sense of happiness? I think at the end of the day, yes. Hmm. Even in, of the fact that they live a life where their real ultimate goal is to own each and every one of their choices that's exactly what they did yeah weird it's so fascinating oh, interesting yeah. so i wish there was some place where we could test that yeah. via some sort of uh, fitness test to put that to put that sense of choice to test to challenge you know what challenge that sense of choice i figured it out yeah i'm trying out for the eagles <laughs> <laughs> don't worry nick siriano called me they said they said they want to have you <laughs> they, said, they said the commanders were hiring <laughs> yeah i'm sure they are uh, for our for our new listeners, I am an Eagles fan. Eric is a Commanders fan. Yes, <laughs> whatever whatever the name did decide to be called whatever it this is, year. Yes, yeah. yes. despite <laughs> despite their <laughs> their uh, added emotional injury that uh, that he must weather. Uh, but yeah, so sell the team, Dan. Get out. Get <laughs> Just out. get out. Retire to the Bahamas, dude. Please, Come on, for the love of God. Uh, All right, man. Cool. cool. All right, brother. Oh, me. <laughs> Which knee? Left knee, right knee? It's always my right knee. Oh. My high knee. <laughs> there it is. Sorry. I <laughs> All right. All right, brother. I'll probably, oh, if I don't talk to you between now and then, I'll probably be texting you around 3 p.m. Thursday, Eastern Standard Time. All right. Yeah. Oh, you plan. Or All voice right. texting. Or voice texting me. Yeah. Yeah. Voice memo. Yeah. Awesome. All right, brother. All right, dude. Adios. Thank you.